Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to MOOC NPTEL course on Bioengineering, an interface with biology and medicine. Today we are going to talk about bacteria and viruses. Just a brief outline of the lecture. We will talk about the diversity in bacteria, gram positive and gram negative type of bacteria and different type of harmful as well as useful applications. Uh, from bacteria. We will also talk about viruses, their structure, reproduction, how they mutate and how that is relevant for the evolutionary context. Previously, we have discussed about the tree of life. Let us look at phylogeny of prokaryotes and try to compare archaea, eukarya with bacteria. So, if you think about nuclear envelope, Bacteria and archaea they do not have nuclear envelope, whereas eukarya they have the nuclear envelope intact. If you look at membrane enclosed organelles, again in bacteria and archaea it is absent, whereas in eukarya it is present. If you look at one of the specific component of cell wall which is peptidoglycan, it is present in bacteria, but it is absent in archaea and eukarya. If you look at membrane lipids, it is very uniquely present in archaea where there is some sort of branched hydrocarbons are present, whereas in bacteria and eukarya it is mainly unbranched hydrocarbons. So, this kind of you know gives you a little bit comparison and a uniqueness of each group on one hand and lot of commonalities between bacteria and archaea and sometimes the common features shared between archaea and the eukarya. Let us first talk about bacteria. What are bacteria? That single celled organism very small. You in fact need a microscope to visualize bacteria. They can be found on any material or surfaces and even now billions of bacteria are on or in your body even right now. There are different type of bacteria shown on the screen E. coli, streptococcus, there are many bacteria which are harmful, there are many bacteria which are also useful. How do they look like? So, bacteria can be present in three basic shapes, spheres or cocci, rods or bacilli and a spiral shape. Most prokaryotic cells are between 0.5 to 5 micron, they are much smaller than the 10 to 100 microns of many eukaryotic cells. Are bacteria alive? So, what does it mean to be alive? It means they can reproduce, they can make their own copies themselves. Do they need to eat? Yes, they also eat. But then question comes, how do bacteria eat? Some bacteria, they make their own food from the sunlight like the plants. Some bacteria are scavengers. They share the environment around them. For example, bacteria in your stomach are now eating what you ate today in the breakfast or in the lunch. Some bacteria are pathogens. They attack on other living organism or other living things. For example, even this bacteria on your face which can attack the skin and some of them causes infection and even acne. How do bacteria move? So, most of the motile bacteria they propel themselves by the flagella which is scattered on the surface at one or both ends. So, many bacteria they exhibit taxis or that is the ability for a bacteria to move towards or away from the stimulus. For example, chemotaxis if we talk about chemotaxis that is a movement towards or away from the chemical stimulus. How do bacteria reproduce? So, bacteria mainly rely on binary phasin for their propagation and in this process 
the cell grows in number, it also needs to grow to twice its starting size and then it splits into the two bacteria. In binary fission, bacteria makes copies by dividing asexually. Some of the process shown on the screen here for Escherichia coli binary fission as well as Salmonella showing binary fission. What is the internal organization and DNA component inside bacteria? Bacterial cells usually lack very complex architecture which is present in the eukaryotes. The prokaryotic genome it is circular, it has less DNA as compared to the eukaryotic genome. The chromosome is located in the nucleoid region and some species of bacteria they also have a small ring shaped DNA which is extra chromosomal DNA called plasmids. So, what is the genetic diversity in the prokaryotes? Prokaryotes have considerable genetic variation and there are mainly three factors which are actually contributing to the genetic diversity of prokaryotes. It is rapid reproduction, mutation and genetic recombination. The high diversity arises from the mutation allows for their rapid evolution. Now, let us discuss specifically the genetic diversity of bacteria. So, bacteria allow researchers to investigate the molecular genetics in very simplest true organisms. Bacterial chromosomes, it is a circular DNA molecule with very few associated proteins. Bacteria also have the plasmids which are the small circular DNA molecules which can replicate independently of their bacterial chromosomes. What are the sources of genetic variability in bacteria? Bacteria reproduces very rapidly. Therefore, the new mutation can very quickly increase a population's genetic diversity. Further, the genetic diversity can also arise by the recombination of the DNA from two different bacterial cells. Let us now look at the cell surface structures of bacteria. So, bacterial cell wall contain peptidoglycan which is a network of sugar polymers cross linked by the polypeptides. The eukaryotic cell walls they are made of cellulose or chitin. Gram staining can be used to classify bacteria based on their cell wall compositions. There are two type of uh, broader groups we can make based on the gram staining. One is gram positive which is much more simpler uh, cell surface structure having more peptidoglycan whereas, gram negative is having less peptidoglycan and also contain an outer membrane. Let us look at the structure of bacterium cell wall and how the gram staining works a little bit more detail. So, as shown on the left side of the screen the gram positive bacteria they have this thick cell wall which is made of peptidoglycan. It traps the crystal violet stain and then after rinsing with alcohol it does not remove the crystal violet stain. So, therefore, these bacteria if you look at under the microscope they look like purple or violet colored bacteria which is known as gram positive bacteria. Now, on the right side you can see the structure of gram negative bacteria, where there is a very thin layer of peptidoglycan present. So, crystal violet stain can be very easily rinsed off from the cytoplasm and after further staining the cell appears pink or red in color. So, now if you look at under microscope these gram negative bacteria looks like pink color. Let us have a lab session specifically for gram staining because you can easily do this kind of experiment where several uh, you know, washing and rinsing steps are involved and just by doing the staining you can broadly classify the bacteria into gram positive or gram negative. So, let us have a lab demonstration session on gram staining. Let us get started with gram staining. This is the bacterial culture that we are going to use for making the smear. This is a clean glass slide. This is a nichrome loop which is going to be used to make the smear on the slide. 
This is a spirit lamp which we are going to use for heat fixation step. First we will sterilize the stoop, uh, loop so that there is no contamination in the bacterial culture. We will let it cool so that the cells do not die because if we in case if we dip the hot loop. We will take a loop full of culture and make the smear on the slide. We will first let it air dry. Once the smear air dries, we will use it to heat fix the smear. The heat fixation step is done so that the cells get stuck onto the slide and do not get washed off when we wash the slide. After the heat fixation step, we will add crystal violet for 1 minute. After 1 minute, we will wash off the stain and then add grams iodine. The grams iodine forms a complex with crystal violet and gets stuck to the bacterial cell walls. So when we wash, wash the smear with decolorizer, the gram positive bacterial cells stay violet and the gram negative cells lose the primary stain that is the crystal violet and then get stained with the second counter stain which is the saffronin. We will now add decolorizer which is acetone alcohol. After few seconds, we will wash off the decolorizer. We will now add saffronin. After 2 minutes, we will wash off the saffronin. We will let the smear get air dried. Once the smear has dried, we will add immersion oil and observe the smear under oil immersion lens of the microscope. For gram positive bacteria, we will see uh, cocci in clusters in purple and if we have gram negative bacterial cells then we will observe red cells. That was all for gram staining. Thank you. Alright, so let us say if a patient comes to a clinician and you know doctor have no clue about you know what type of bacterial disease affecting this that, that individual. So in that case, the gram staining can immediately give the first level of information whether these bacteria belong to gram positive or gram negative. Now looking at the uh, cell surface composition of bacteria, there are many antibiotic targets uh, have been made. So many antibiotics, they target peptidoglycan and they damage bacterial cell wall. The gram negative bacteria, they are more likely to be antibiotic resistant. A polysaccharide or the protein layer which is called capsule that covers many prokaryotes. So, the slide here I have shown uh, many targets for the antibiotics. For example, the inhibition of cell wall synthesis that can be governed and that can be controlled by antibiotics like penicillin, cephalosporin and vancomycin. If you look at a uh, disruption of cell membrane function, uh, that is what is being targeted by antibiotic 
polymixin. Inhibition of translation process is controlled by antibiotics like tetracycline, erythromycin, streptomycin and chloramphenicol. Inhibition of metabolism uh, can be targeted by sulfonylamide. Inhibition of transcription can be controlled by antibiotics rifamycin and inhibition of DNA replication has been targeted by quinolones. So, again as you can see uh, looking at the composition and of the cell wall and different membranes uh, different type of antibiotic targets they try to uh, damage the bacterial cell wall and try to control bacteria for many infections. So, bacterial diseases I am sure we have all encountered one or the other uh, bacterial infection. Many bacteria they are human pathogens. Uh, just shown here is one of the uh, uh, example for anthrax disease which is caused by bacteria known as bacillus anthracis which can infect through the skin, lung or stomach. So, bacteria has both beneficial as well as harmful impact on humans. If we think about the broader environmental issues, so bacteria plays a major positive role in the recycling of chemical elements between the living and the non-living components of ecosystems. The chemoheterotrophic prokaryotes they function as decomposites which could break down the dead organisms as well as waste products. Prokaryotes they can also increase the availability of nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium for the plant growth. Prokaryotes also uh, form symbiotic relationship with larger organisms and that can be very useful. So, we have seen that bacteria on one hand uh, are very harmful they can cause many diseases and on other hand they can be very helpful especially for many environmental related issues. So, scientists have been trying to harness uh, the uh, various you know benefits out of these prokaryotes and this is one of the hot topic in research and technology development. Experiments have been performed using prokaryotes which have led to some important advancements in the DNA technology. For example, Escherichia coli has been used for the gene cloning. We have discussed that how agrobacterium tumefaciens can be used to produce transgenic plants. There are various natural plastics, antibiotics, vitamins, ethanol production all of these are governed by prokaryotes. So, as the bioremediation which is very important from the environmental point of view. Here there are some examples shown that how bacteria can synthesize and store polyhydroxy alkanolate which can be used for making biodegradable plastics one of the key areas for uh, research. The fertilizers spray they can stimulate bacterial growth which can metabolize even oils or one could develop bacteria to produce ethanol fuel from the renewable plant products. So, all of these are you know some remarkable examples how uh, research on prokaryotes can be so beneficial for many type of uh, products and processes. Let us now move on and talk about viruses. So, what are viruses? These are much smaller and much simpler as compared to uh, eukaryotes and of course, they are even uh, if you compare with the bacteria right. So, they are very small infectious particles which has their own genetic material and the protein coat. They are obligate intracellular parasites which can reproduce only when they are present inside a host cell. They infect almost all the members of the three cellular forms of life whether bacteria, archaea or eukarya. The question comes are viruses alive or they have the kind of a borrowed life. Viruses lack their energy metabolism. Are all viruses very small? No, not all viruses are very small. In fact, people are studying different type of viruses and they have reported that there are some large DNA viruses which are extremely useful to study evolution and biology. There are example like vaccinia virus 190 kb genome, Pandora virus which is 2.5 mb genome, Mimivirus 
1.2 mb genome. So, such you know large DNA viruses are they alive? Why are they so big? You know how do they invade the host? How do they manage to uh, package their genome inside the capsid? There are many interesting aspects of studying viruses and which are still pretty much unknown and one of the hot areas of research also looking at the evolutionary context. Broadly viruses consist of a nucleic acid surrounded by the protein coat. Historically scientists were able to detect viruses indirectly before they were even actually able to see them under the microscopes. For example, tobacco mosaic virus which causes tobacco mosaic disease. It stunts the growth of tobacco plants and gives their leaves a mosaic kind of coloration. So, shown here is the healthy leaf and then compared with the tobacco mosaic virus infected leaf. What are the bacteriophages? Bacteriophages virus can infect and set in motion a genetic takeover of bacteria such as E. coli. Are the TD viruses infecting this E. coli cells alive? That is I think an interesting topic for you to go back and study and then think about how these viruses infect bacterial cell. Let us now think about virus structure. The viruses are made of nucleic acid, DNA or RNA and they are enclosed in a protein coat which is capsid. Capsid is a protein shell that encloses a viral genome which can have various structures. Some viruses have envelopes, membranous covering which are derived from the membrane of host cells. So, bacteriophages have most complex capsid structure. As you can see on the screen, the bacteriophage T4 is shown, but there is a complex capsid which consists of an icosahedral head and a tail apparatus. E. coli and its viruses are used as a model system for many type of research. Let us now talk about RNA viruses. The retroviruses such as human immunodeficiency virus, they use the enzyme called reverse transcriptase. This can help to copy their RNA genome into DNA, which can then be integrated into the host genome as a provirus. Now, here on the screen you can see one of the uh, major uh, disease caused by viruses which is uh, poliomyelitis or the infantile paralysis which is caused by polio virus. The polio virus invades the nervous system which causes paralysis in one out of every 200 children. Polio still remains endemic in several parts of the world including Afghanistan, Nigeria and Pakistan. Let us now look at another type of virus which is SARS virus or severe acute respiratory syndrome. The SARS causing agent is a coronavirus like what is shown on the screen here. The name comes from the corona of glycoprotein spikes protruding from the envelope. There are many viral diseases which one could observe in the plants. There are more than 2000 types of viral diseases of plants which are already known. The common symptoms of these viral diseases and these viral infections include the spots on the leaf and fruits, stunted growth and damaged flowers or roots. Let us now talk about swine flu, swine origin H1N1 influenza viruses. A respiratory disease of pigs caused by type A influenza virus, its symptoms include fever, chills, cough, sore throat, body ache, headache, fatigue etc. It, it is very contagious, it spreads mainly from person to person through the cough or sneezing and often by touching mouth or nose of the infected individuals. How influenza A viruses can be classified? Let us look at their uh, structure. So, they have surface glycoproteins which is having two major components uh, heme agglutinin or HA and neuraminidase which is Na and this is what gives the term H1N1. So, influenza A virus classified on the basis of antigenicity of HA and NA surface glycoproteins. And there are in fact 16 HA subtypes H1 to H16 as well as 9 NA subtypes N1 to N9 of these proteins. 
The HA proteins they are very important for the cellular receptor binding, fusion of viral and endosomal membranes, whereas the NA proteins they help to virus to release from the infected cells. With lot of these heterogeneity of uh, H and N proteins, now let us briefly look at evolution of H1N1. The swine origin influenza A or H1N1 virus, uh, especially the SOIVs, they resulted from the reassortment of avian or human or swine, the triple reassortment viruses with Eurasian avian like swine viruses cross. So, what is important to note here that because of lot of you know genetic reassortment which is happening in the viruses, they can give rise to new type of uh, viruses and H1N1 got evolution from similar kind of uh, reassortment. So, studying viruses actually can be very helpful and there are many challenges ahead which uh, can be posed by viruses. For example, risk of generating novel viruses through reassortment, resistance against drug or inhibitors is very much possible. And for us to scale up or the mass production of vaccines is very challenging. It also signifies that studying viruses can be very helpful from the evolutionary aspects. If we know their genetic makeup, if we know the possibilities of genetic reassortments, then you know in case of new species arises, I think one uh, could still make some sort of guess that how to control that kind of viral infection. So, in summary, today we briefly discussed about uh, different bacteria and viruses. Uh, we discussed about the rapid reproduction in bacteria, mutation and genetic recombination which promotes genetic diversity in prokaryotes. Viruses they consist of nucleic acid surrounded by the uh, capsid proteins. They replicate only in host cell which poses the question are they alive. We also looked at how genetic reassortment can give rise to different strains of viruses and therefore, studying viruses are very important in terms of the evolutionary aspects. We will stop here and continue on the next topic in next lecture. Thank you.